together this evening. Palladium PR, Pulp DME, who've done the production this evening, Gravity, who you will hopefully join at Joint Movement Dot today and use all their social media and online web apps accordingly. Peter Luxury, which has been now, uh, some of you who've known myself and all think for many years, it is now 10 years old, so we have, we're still here, which is fantastic. Champagne for Life, which the majority of I hope received on arrival. Um, for the guys, do hand it on to uh, a girlfriend of choice, um, or a daughter, or whatever you think is appropriate. And for the girls, we hope you enjoy Champagne for Life. It's on the tip. Um, GlobalPR.net, the loyalty team, uh, and primarily the uh, Free Holdings team, which is a huge team of incredibly dedicated, uh, I hate to use the word staff, Incredibly, incredible team who get pulled in lots of different directions, like doing this in five weeks. So I thank you all uh, on behalf of us both. Um, and then James Wren and his team from London Zoo, which uh, the Global Charity Trust is proud to, you know, to bring to people's attention is actually a charity. It's also a fantastic venue to throw events. And knowing that when you do throw an event here, you actually not only give back to the zoo and the charity, but all to the projects that they're knocking across 50 countries across the world. But again, I'm gonna leave that to James to give you more information. Um, before I go into what the Global Party is today, what the movement is and the global, uh, etc., I am going to introduce you uh, to my co-trustee, but an incredibly amazing philanthropist, an incredible businessman, and an incredibly, incredibly close friend. Uh, so without further ado, uh, to explain a little bit about where the Global Charity Trust has come from and uh, where we hope to take it. Uh, may you put your hands together for uh, Lord Stanley Fink. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, David. If I could uh, repeat David's uh, warm welcome to all of you, our distinguished guests, and also repeat his many thanks to all the staff who worked so incredibly hard to pull off this event in such a short time period. And obviously to that list, I should add David himself, who uh, didn't sleep much in the last few weeks. Uh, people say to me, you know, this is a third global party. How, how will it work? Well, the first one took us over two years to organize. And we raised over 500,000 pounds for charities and good causes. The second one, some of you will remember, but it took us about 18 months to put it together across um, over 100 cities around the world. And it raised over a million pounds with London, one of the events in London that we did with the Mayor's Fund for London, uh, for London's youth, being the, the, most, uh, the most interesting and uh, successful fundraising event. The third one that we'll do this September will have taken us just 12 months now we hope to have venues in literally hundreds of countries, multiple venues in hundreds of countries, and we aim for something significantly above the, the million pounds, uh, two or three. And this is a sort of annuity we want to create for charities and good causes. All the money goes to the Global Charitable Trust, which is administered by the Charities Aid Foundation, which it, its sole mission is to support other registered charities in the UK and charitable causes overseas. Um, I should say to you that the Global Trust's philanthropic mission is to support dozens, indeed hundreds of charities this, this time in their worldwide causes, with increased, also giving them increased brand awareness and the direct financial assistance. The, the charities we choose generally focus on health, education, children, which is my focus, the elderly, which I guess will soon be my focus, the, the environment, the arts, but also to animal welfare, and hence the appropriateness of our partnership and the venue this evening. The, the Global Charity Trust goals are achieved by two initiatives. One you've heard of and you've seen the Global Party, and the other one David will describe in more detail, the movement. But finally, my last task is to introduce James Wren, who is the Development Director of the Zoological Society of London, who happened to run London Zoo, and also many other charitable activities around the world. 
Over to you, James. Okay, good evening everyone. Well, welcome to ZSO London Zoo. I mean, uh, I hope you've been impressed by our venue. It's, uh, I love coming to work here every day. It's an amazing place to go. But um, one of the things that people don't know about us, we've been around since 1826, most famous for London Zoo. It's a great venue, amazing place to come. But did you know we work in over 50 countries around the world trying to save species from extinction? You know, and I think we need to, I need people like you to help us shout from the rooftops about that because it's so important that people know um, that whatever we do out in the field will save animals and wildlife forever. Um, so a couple of quick examples maybe. Um, out in Nepal, um, rhinos have been poached really close to levels of extinction. We set up a program out in an area of Nepal, and I'm delighted to say over the last two years, not a single rhino has been poached. Okay. What we do, what we do, really works, and I'm so proud to be part of an organisation like this. And really, the tie up with the global party is is, is ideal for us because I need to get that global message out there. So thank you very much. And what I'd like to do is just uh, draw your attention to the screens that are dotted around the room, because yesterday we launched our Asian lion fundraising campaign. We're trying to raise six million pounds to save the Asian lion. We're halfway there. We've got three million already. So I need help from everybody around the, around the country and around the world to get that next three million. So if I could just get you to just draw your attention to the screens and we we'll just watch a very short video. Thank you. The Asian lion is at crisis point. With only 400 left, they survive in one isolated forest in India. Increased poacher interest, a forest fire outbreak or a disease epidemic could wipe this ancient species of lion out forever. They've outgrown their tiny pocket of forest and are increasingly coming into contact and sadly conflict with humans. However, we believe there is still time to turn things around for the majestic Asian lion and that this incredible animal can be protected and thrive again. But we must act now. At the Zoological Society of London, we plan to use our years of expertise and experience to make a genuine difference to the critically endangered species by providing technology to allow forest rangers access to real-time data. This will enable the forest ranger rapid response team to act immediately on problems. Sharing our expertise through a vet exchange program to train forest rangers and the gear line rescue team on the latest and best veterinary procedures will play a key role in ensuring that a new forest being given protected status is a safe place for the lions to move by working closely with local communities who have not previously come into contact with lions. However, it's not just in India that we are looking to engage communities with the plight of these lions. Right here in the heart of ZSL London Zoo, we're developing the new Land of the Lions exhibit using inventive and original ways to bring the story of the Asian lion and the communities who live in and around the Gear Forest to life. We aim to provide visitors with an exceptional experience that will stay with them long after their visit ends. This will also work as a breeding facility for the Asian lion, helping us to build on our previous successes in breeding these amazing animals and helping to protect them for future generations. Can you imagine a world without these majestic animals? If we act now, we will have to. Help us make sure the last 400 Asian lions don't disappear forever. Thank you very much for your attention on that short video. Okay, so that's the sort of thing that we're going to do. Um, so just four pounds will uh, fund the hotline out of India for one night. And that's all we're asking people to do, is, is sort of text that um, line to 70300. I know you've all got mobile phones in here, I can see lots of them. Uh, so you can always text that. And then things like uh, just £400 will train 20 rangers out in India who can then go and protect the areas uh, where these last remaining Asian lions exist. Okay, and I just will leave you on that message. So thank you very much for your attention tonight. And again, a very warm welcome to ZSL London Zoo. And I'll just pass it back over to David Johnston. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry to keep you quiet, just for one, uh, one, 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 one more minute, please. Okay, I promise you this is the end. Um, the rosé, as I say, there are many, many magnums to be drunk, so just give me two more minutes and uh, maybe you can hear a little bit more about what this evening is about. Um, the Global Party. Uh, the Global Party was founded in 2011. The idea was inspired by Phileas Fogg around the world in 80 days. And the idea was to get the owners of some of the finest venues across the world to kindly donate their venue, put on a show, invite their VIPs, all in the aid of charity. Um, when I first mentioned it to people, they thought I was insane. Um, why, when, how? But to be fair, they embraced it. We had the Orient Express, we had 2,000 people at the Natural History Museum, um, and we had many, many other fantastic, wonderful venues across the world. The hardest event is always the first event. Nobody really understands why, but they go along with the flow, uh, eventually. Um, the second global party, uh, the idea was inspired by 360 degrees. The idea was to try and see if we could expand the giving of venues and linking them together. It turned into the largest private party, charity party in the world. And we were very excited that we managed to get through what was ultimately the second event. Um, the third global party, which is scheduled for this year, um, my ambitious target is to try and take it to 360 cities across the world. The idea is to bring it to five-star hotels, premium nightclubs, art galleries, premium luxury real estate, and retail. The idea being that the more venues that get involved, the more philanthropic the global party event becomes. Um, to date, we were, all, our intention was just to concentrate to get 120 cities confirmed by tonight. I think we sit at about 116. And we have a minimum of five-star hotels in all those cities across the world as we stand today. The hope is to try and take it to 500 events over the coming months. Um, and it will become clear as to what the Global Party has the capability to do um, in the next couple of minutes. So that's the Global Party. Its aim has been funded by the Global Charity Trust, and its game is to fund charities across the world. Now it's across the month of September, as I say, across 360 cities. That's one initiative that we've run. The second initiative is a little bit ambitious, but the Global Party wasn't small in its ambition. And I think for many years to come, this new initiative has every chance of working. And that's very much why we've invited you all here this evening. Um, the movement. How can I explain it in a nutshell? Uh, it's a 365-day fundraiser. We're asking the industry, the luxury industry as a whole, to get in behind the movement. It basically is an initiative where a bar, a club, a hotel, a retailer chooses just one item in their entire menu, whether it's a glass of Pinot Grigio, um, a cocktail, uh, a night stay, or a suite, and they stitch in a little nugget which they are happy to give to charity. Every day that anybody in the world who buys that one item, they will drop that nugget into a pot. And you'll be able to notice it by the central icon that sits in the middle of the movement logo. It doesn't sound like a lot. Um, I think to take it, to put it into perspective, if we could just raise 10 pounds a day from one venue, that raises 3,600 pounds a year. If you could take that to 5,000 restaurants in London alone, and another 10,000 bars in London alone, you begin to see where the movement can really go. It has to start somewhere. I mean, we're very fortunate to be sitting under what is ultimately a beautiful venue. Um, we believe very strongly that the marketing campaign of the Global Party can launch this concept overnight through the generosity of the venues that we have involved in 366, 360 cities in one go. But it does need to start somewhere. Hashtag the movement is, is the sort of the, the, the hash of hope. 
as in that people will do it. I don't know exactly what it does, but my guy's song is brilliant. So whatever it is, for you journalists out there, please do it. For those of you know who understand philanthropy, and you don't have to do anything. The beauty of the movement is you actually have to do nothing except for enjoy a little bit of luxury. And every time you do, something goes back, which is a really exciting thing. My business partner and my co-trustee is a philanthropist through and through, through and through. I would one day love to be a philanthropist, but I, at the end of the day, have created, I hope with my team, an amazing, exciting philanthropic platform, but it needs your support. This has been done in five weeks, so imagine what we can do in five months, and imagine what we can do in five years. So the Global Party celebrates the movement every year and proudly supports the Global Charity Trust. The Global Charity Trust, governed by CAF, is excited and delighted to support hundreds of charities and hundreds more worldly, worthy causes across the world. I really go back to it. Whatever you do today with your hashtag and your tweet and your Facebook, but more importantly, your belief, takes this thing as far as it wants to go. I'm terrifiedly excited about where it can go. But I really go back to the point, it starts somewhere, and it starts tonight. And so we'd love you as if you're restaurants, bars, we have owners from across the world from the Global Party, we have Ignacio from the Zagaleta, who is doing the Global Party again, and giving over his venue for what will be another amazing fundraiser. We have venues that have come in, flown in from all over the world. We have owners from India who are throwing big, big events. Um, just to mention the Global Party one step. If you are invited by one of the venues to the Global Party, you can go to as many events in the world as you wish, subject to making a donation directly to charity upon arrival. So, the Global Party says what it does on the tin. Now, I hope. It's every September. So we want it to grow and grow and grow. The movement. Everybody in this room can directly make it happen. From the owners of venues, all the way to individuals who like a glass of Pinot Grigio, or to those who like a strawberry cocktail, or whatever it is that you like, look for the TM, make it happen, and um, then we'll get somewhere. The Global Charity Trust, well, its mission, it has lots of new ideas. We've got some big ideas, but we're gonna try and focus on these two and take them to the four corners of the world. So, at this point, I can only but thank you all for coming. Thank you for listening. And um, I hope to see you next September. Uh, London Zoo, we look forward to creating a long and prosperous relationship. We want to get their message out there. That's part of the Trust's mission. But we also want to help raise some great funds for what the causes they do. So I'm going to end it now. Lots of rosé, lots of magnums. But I will leave you with a little showreel. There will be no speech afterwards, so you can talk. Uh, enjoy the evening. Thank you so much for coming. And as I say, please do support the movement. Many thanks.